Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be going over the derivative rules, which pretty much is just a bunch of little tricks here, a bunch of little shortcuts that were proved to us by these crazy mathematicians, and we just now get to use them so we can compute derivatives much faster and much more efficiently. So say goodbye to the limits, no more long way, no more difference quotient and taking limits. Now we're just going to be using these um, derivative rules, and it's going to be much faster to get through them. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have that to avoid using blank, we have derivative rules. So that means that to avoid using limits, we now have all these awesome rules that we're going to deal with, right? And let's go ahead and start with them. The first one's going to be the constant rule, right? Which here we're going to actually talk about a little bit about notation. And here when we have d over d of x, right? Which means the derivative in terms of x, right? That's what that means. Or are you supposed to read it? Of a constant. So the derivative in terms of x of a constant is equal to zero. So that means that whenever we have any constant, our shortcut is just going to tell us that boom, the derivative is just zero. So for example, let's say we have find the derivative of six. Well, six is a constant. It's a number. The derivative is going to be zero. So there, that was a quick shortcut into doing the derivative of a constant. No more crazy limits and long ways. Now it's going to be much faster and much less painful. So how about the coefficient rule? So let's say we have a linear function, right? So just a number or a constant times x. And then we're going to find the derivative of it. So the derivative of c times x. The derivative is just going to be x, right? Or the coefficient of this linear function, right? So linear function, I mean that the function is going to be x to the first power. This only applies to when you have a linear function. And then let's try an example. So let's say we have to find the derivative of 3x, which is a linear function. It is just going to be its coefficient, which is 3. So the answer is going to be just 3. Boom. Quick. Shortcuts. Effective. Fast. So now we're going to go in the power rule, which is, I would say, the most important rule of this section, right? And that is when we have um, different x's, polynomials, different x to different powers. And what we're going to do is, let's say we find the derivative of x to the n power, right? We're going to bring that n forward right so we have n times x and then we're going to subtract one from the polynomial so it's going to be n minus one is going to be our new exponent but that's just way too crazy let's see an example so here we're going to have find the derivative of x cubed so x cubed is x to the three and what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring the three forward i'm going to bring my exponent forward so it's three times x right and then i'm going to subtract one from three so it's three minus one and that's going to give me three times x squared so that's what all those n's and numbers and minus 1 mean. I'm just going to bring the number down, and then I'm just going to subtract them from the exponent. So that was our first three set of rules that are now shortcuts, and we're no longer going to have to do those long limits, right? If you guys remember, finding the derivative of anything squared the long way was just way too long. We had to like foil, just brings back bad memories. So let's go ahead and look into some properties, right? So the difference here between the rules and the properties is that these properties actually remind you of limits. It may remind you, may not. But when we did limits, we actually talked about all these linear properties, which are when we have a constant inside or outside our limit, or inside or outside our derivative in this case, right? Then we also have addition, and we have the difference, which is when we have subtraction, right? So the first one, which is a constant property, it tells us that if we have the derivative of a constant times a function, we can just simply take out that constant and multiply the constant times whatever the derivative of the function is itself, right? So in that case, let's see an example of what that means, right? So here we have 3x again, and what we're going to say is that to find the derivative of 3x, what we can do is we can just take out the 3, right? And find the derivative of just x. And it is going to give us the same thing as the actual answer. And that's going to be 3 times the derivative of just x. But what is the derivative of just x? This is x to the 1, right? And x to the 1 is going to be, we're going to bring the 1 forward. So it's going to be 1x, and then it's going to be 1 minus 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0, right? This gives us 0. And anything to the 0 power is 1. So in this case, this whole term is just going to give us 1. So 3 times 1 is just going to give us 3. 
which this three matches our answer when we did it using the coefficient rule. So here's an example. Whenever you have any any constant, not just exact, not just when it comes to x's or x squareds and with anything, it can even come to trigs or logarithms. Whenever you have like three cosine of x, we can just take out the three and find the derivative of the trig of the trig function, right? So this happens to anything, not just linear functions. Now let's go ahead to the addition property, which means that when you have two functions adding, the, the derivative is equal to the derivatives individually of the f plus the derivative individually of the g. So that means that we're going to use the property, which is the last time I'm actually going to use these properties. From now on, we're just going to assume these properties work and just go ahead and use them. Now I have to actually divide everything into d of dx and all that annoying stuff. We're just going to go ahead and use them. So here we have derivative of x squared plus a derivative of 7. So what is the derivative of x squared? We bring down the 2, we subtract 1. So we're bringing the 2, so it's 2x. We subtract 1 from the exponent. The exponent is 1 stays the same. And then here we have the root of 7. 7 is a constant. And what is the root of the constant? Constant rule tells us the root of is just 0. So we don't care about it. The answer is just 2x. You guys know that this would have taken a long time doing the difference quotient, doing using limits. But now it's much faster. So now let's go into the difference property, which means that we have two functions. Subtracting is going to be equal to the derivative of the first function minus the derivative of the second function. So here we're going to have d of d of x of x cubed minus d of x, right? So here I'm going to start off by finding the derivative of the first term, which is going to be the derivative of x cubed, which is going to be, let me go ahead and rewrite this just in a second for space. So the derivative of the first one, which is x cubed, is going to, you're going to bring them the 3 x and you're going to subtract one from the exponent which is just 2. So 3x squared is going to be our derivative of x cubed minus what is the derivative of 2x? Well we have two different ways. We can do the whole constant property but in this case the coefficient property is much faster. The coefficient rule is faster so the answer is going to be 2. So it's going to be 3x squared minus 2 and we're done. right? So let's go ahead and now we're going to talk about different examples and in these examples is not exactly how to just bring exp um, powers down and subtract minus one. I assume you guys know how to do that. We just did six different examples on these rules, right? I don't want to focus on the rules. I want to focus on the manipulation of different problems, like the skills, the algebra skills that you need in order to make sure that you can do any problem using the power rule, right? So if you're restrained to using the power rule, you have to be able to do certain problems that you need to manipulate first before you actually are able to do them, right? So let's look at the first one, letter A. So letter A, we're just going to focus on the rules that we learned, applying everything. So let's do it. So here we have x squared minus 3x plus 1. So I'm going to say derivative, my notation for the derivative of f of x, it's going to be f prime. So my derivative, I'm not saying that it's equal to, what is the derivative of x squared? Correct. It is 2x. You bring the 2 down, you put the x, and you subtract 1. Now, what is the derivative of 3x? Use the coefficient rule. So it's just a 3, so just minus 3. What is the derivative of just plus 1? Use the constant rule, which is just 0. So plus 0. So your derivative, it is just equal to 2x minus 3. And we're done. So now let's go ahead and check out letter B. So here in letter B, we have x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 which is different from letter A because here in letter A I just have some polynomial where I can just you know use the power rule to find everything and I was good to go but here I have I don't have polynomials I have polynomials multiplying each other so there's, there's an issue here right and the problem is that I cannot use my property in the form that f of x is written so I need to manipulate my f of x in order to use my power rule which is the only resource that I have now later on you guys will learn different ways to solving this problem um, using a specific rule for it, right? And you guys may already know what it is, but I'll hold on so you guys learn that. And now we're going to go ahead and be stuck using the power rule. So we're going to manipulate this f of x by horrible word. We're going to foil. We're going to foil or distribute, whatever you guys are more comfortable with, right? So by foiling, I mean that I'm going to distribute 
x times everything, right? And then the 1 times everything. So let's go ahead and do that real quick because I know you guys already are beast of foiling. But x times 2x is equal to 2x squared. x times 1 is equal to plus x. Plus 1 times plus 2x is equal to plus 2x. And plus 1 times 1 is equal to 1. So we just distributed and or foiled, whatever you guys are more comfortable with. And now we're going to combine like terms. And we had 2x squared. And then we combined this x plus this 2x. And now it gave us 3x, right? So now we're done combining the like terms. So now we have made letter B look a lot like letter A. So now we can apply our, our power rule. Before we couldn't because it just didn't look familiar to us. It wasn't in the right form. Okay? So let's go ahead and find the derivative, which means I'm going to have f prime. If you guys notice, whenever I put the prime here, it is my indication that I'm starting my derivative. Until then, I do not put a prime. You see how I don't have a prime there because I just have my f of x. And notation is key. You want to let your f of x equal to f of x and your f prime equal to f prime. So what is the derivative of 2x squared? So I'm not actually going to use the, the whole um, coefficient rule where I need to, I mean coefficient property, where I need to like take out the 2 and you know find the derivative of the x squared independ independently. I'm just going to literally just multiply the 2 times the 2 and that is going to give me 4. So I brought down my power by multiplying 2 times 2 and it gave me 4. And I'm, I'm going to put my x there and then I'm going to subtract 1. So it's the first power. Then I'm going to find the derivative of 3x by my um, coefficient rule. And that's just going to be plus 3. And my derivative of, of 1 is not going to matter because that's just going to be 0. So my answer is just equal to 4x plus 3. And I am done. So here was the foiling technique that we needed to recognize in order to do this problem. So now here, let's go ahead and go into letter C. And there's something very important about letter C, and that's the reason why I chose it. And that is because we have a problem with letter C, right? So the problem that I want to address about 5x squared plus radical x is the last part. 5x squared plus radical x, right? So the radical is a problem, and we have to address it, and we're going to call it the radical problem. The radical problem. And this is a problem when we have f of x. So this is an f of x problem that we need to address. When we talk about f prime of x, there's different problems that we need to address. But right now, for the radical problem, means that whenever we are about to derive, which is where we're at right now, we want to derive the following equation. We cannot do that if we have radicals. We need to make sure they're in exponents. And if we scroll up for a second, I provided you guys with the formula on how to go from radicals to exponents. Right? So now we're going to change this equation of f of x to a an exponent. So now radical x is equal to x to the one half. And that is something you guys are going to use so much throughout this course that just kind of it deserves its own little box. So I'm going to have its own little box where I have that radical x is equal to x to the one half. It's just so important, so used all the time. So x to the one half, right? So now, let's go ahead and derive our function. So now I'm going to have f prime of x is equal to, if I have 5x squared, I'm going to bring down this 2, and I'm going to have 10x. So what I did there is I brought down the 2, and I subtracted 1, so I just have 10x to the 1, plus I'm going to now do the same thing with the 1 half. I'm going to bring down the 1 half, so I have 1 half x, and I'm going to subtract 1 from the 1 half, so I have minus um, x to the negative half. So once I do that, I'm going to run into the next set of problems which I'm going to talk about. And these are going to be my f prime type of problems, right? My f prime problems. And then I'm going to have two problems here. I don't like negative exponents when I have my f prime. And I also don't like fraction exponents. So those are the two problems that we have when we talk about the f prime. They're not simplified enough. It just looks ugly to these math people, right? So let's go ahead and write our f prime again. And now we're going to have the 10x is just 10x. 
it's just by itself. We're gonna get rid of the first problem, which is the negative problem. So if you guys remember, we're gonna scroll up, and the, the way we get rid of a negative power is we just bring it to the bottom. We just change this location, right? So your rules are there from exponents. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna have plus one half x to the one half. So we're almost done because we already got rid of the negative problem. But now we have one more problem and that is going to be our, that is going to be our, our fraction problem, our fraction exponent problem. So we need to change it from x to the one half to, see why this box is just so important because x to the one half is equal to radical x. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna have 10x plus one over two radical x. And we're done. We're gonna say that this right here is our derivative. It has started off with a radical problem which we solved, and then our last two problems which are the negative exponent problem and the fraction problem. So we are good. So let's go ahead and do our our example D, which itself has a problem, right? So here we have a fraction. We have two functions, two polynomials dividing, and I haven't given you any rules, any properties for when I have two functions dividing. But I don't need to because in this problem, if you guys see, the whole polynomial on the top is being divided by x. And I'm going to find a way to rewrite this so I can use the power rule that I know and the properties that I know. And that is going to be by splitting up this top polynomial and dividing it by x, divide the negative 4 x by x, and dividing the 3 by x. I'm going to divide every term on the top by x. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because now I can use my I can use my addition property which I have here and I'm going to use my difference property which I have here because now I have polynomials adding and subtracting. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. So here the x is the x squared and the x are going to cancel. So it's going to give me just 3 to the x. Here the 4x and the x are going to cancel, so it's just going to give me minus 4. And then here, you want to say that nothing cancels, so I'm just going to have 3 over x. But I do not know how to derive a fraction. I go back to the same problem. I have a fraction. I have an x on the bottom. How do I do that? I'm going to use this property here again, this, this uh, negative power property, to bring it down from a positive exponent on the bottom to a negative exponent on the top. So I'm going to have positive 3x to the negative 1. Because I'm just going to bring up, I'm going to bring up this exponent. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And now that I'm ready, I've got my f of x is ready to be derived, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and find out the derivative of 3x, which if I use my coefficient rule, it is just 3, minus the derivative of 4, which is zero if I use my constant, my constant rule. And now I'm going to do my derivative of 3x to the negative 1, which is going to be my power rule, and I'm going to bring down this power. So it's going to give me negative 3x to the negative 2, right? I subtract 1 from negative 1, so that gives me negative 2. So now, now that I have my f prime of x, I go check on my problems for f prime of x, and if you guys see, I have my negative exponent problem that I need to get rid of. This right here needs to be taken care of, negative exponent. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to use the same rule that I have up here. I'm going to use a different color to show you guys what rule I'm talking about. This green rule right here, in which if I have a negative exponent on the top, I'm just going to bring it to the bottom to make it positive. So I'm going to write the final answer here in green. So it's going to be 3. The 0 is not going to count. Minus 3 over x squared. I'm going to bring this 2 to the bottom. So you guys see how I can use that negative exponent rule to my advantage to bring it up or to my advantage to bring it down. I can just play with that rule to just give me what I want. And this whole bringing up and down of exponents when it's negative or positive is going to come in real handy later on when we start doing more, more complex and longer derivatives. Now let's do some practice problems on how to see different scenarios on how to compute this, um, how to use these derivative rules. See you guys next time.